Hi and welcome to statistics for the summer 2020 semester. Uh, what I would like to do in this video is go through the, uh, through the syllabus, talk about the course, the materials, the expectations, the work, the grading, uh, basically all the pertinent information for the course so you can, at the end of this video, get started and access all the course materials right away. All right, so my name is Eric Gorenstein. Um, you can reach me at this email address on the syllabus. Uh, office hours will be obviously not face to face. So um, rather than have specific office hours that you have to log on to, I'm going to ha hold office hours uh, by appointment and it could be through a phone call or a Zoom meeting. All right, so our course starts Monday, which is uh, the 1st of June. It runs for six weeks. Now, six weeks is a short amount of time for a math course. We're basically squeezing 15 weeks worth of material into six. Uh, so it's gonna we're gonna hit the ground running, and it's gonna be a you know it's, it's gonna be a pretty hectic six weeks. Uh, okay. So uh, first important piece of information is my e-portfolio. I'm not using Moodle. Um, everything for this course is going to be on two different websites. The first of them is my ePortfolio. So that's that's this one right here. So when you go to this website, so let me actually pull up the website. If this comes up, the connection is not private. Uh, sometimes that happens. I'm not sure exactly why. Uh, just hit advanced and then proceed or proceed anyway depending on what it says which browser you're using and go to the website so it should take you here this is my home page uh, different courses I teach uh, we're MAT 181 that's stats so you'll go to the MAT 181 tab all right so everything for the course everything you need is on here so we have uh, so there's, there's seven pages here, one for each of the six weeks and then a, a home page for the course. So on the home page, there's a link to the syllabus if you need to access the syllabus again, uh, the weekly schedule, which is also on the syllabus and the academic calendar, which is also on the syllabus. Uh, so these are all links to either websites or documents. Uh, there's a couple of formula sheets that might be really helpful as we go through the semester. Um, a link to download Microsoft Office, uh, discounted Wi-Fi service right now. Comcast is offering, I think it's called Internet Essentials uh, for 10 bucks a month. So that might be something you might want to look into. Okay, so each one of these weekly folders, I'll open up week one. As a, uh, I'm about 90% done uploading all the materials. But basically, each week, which runs Sunday, um, which runs... Uh, Monday morning at 12 a.m. until Sunday, the following Sunday at midnight, there's a, a, a tab for each week. And so, for example, week one, we're covering these four sections. And I have each week broken down into a list of activities that you'll do. And it's meant to be done in order. And you'll see there's 12 activities. Um, actually, eight of them are required. Then there's... Uh, some optional um, the Khan Academy videos and stuff like that. I haven't posted the links yet, but that'll be up before the end of the weekend. Uh, so basically each week is gonna have pretty much the same structure. So activity one is always read the textbook. And uh, so activity one and two are read the textbook and then my video lecture. So I'll have uh, a video lecture, anything in, in, in boldface red, is a link to one of my videos. And so like for this first right here, you have my, my first set of PowerPoint notes and you have a link to a YouTube video. Let me actually just click on that. <clears throat> so this is a, a link for a, a YouTube uh, video and I, I, go, uh, I go through the notes and sort of do what I would be doing. Oh, let me turn this off. I, I do in the video what I would be doing if we were to be meeting face to face and I had a screen and a projector. Okay, and then the other file is just the uh, it'll download the PowerPoint notes um, for that chapter. So for week one, 
Activity one, read the textbook. Activity two, my um, video lectures. Activities three and four, this is, uh, and again, like I said, I'll, I'll post some links here before the end of the weekend. These are optional um, supplemental materials on Khan Academy. And then activity five, uh, the homework on my math lab, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, activity six, an introduction to Excel. And then activity seven starts in on chapter two. So it's basically a repeat of the first six. Uh, read section 2.1. Watch my video lecture on 2.1, practice worksheet on 2.1. Um, anytime I have a practice worksheet up, I'll have my solutions and also a video. All right, so back to the syllabus. Uh, so you really, you, you absolutely have to reference this website multiple times, every single week throughout the semester. Now, required course materials, uh, two things. You need to purchase a access code to My Math Lab. Now, some of you may have used My Math Lab before. If you have, you already have an existing account. You would just add this course, and the course ID is down here at the bottom of the first page. If you have not used My Math Lab before, you have to go to the website, and the first thing it's gonna ask you for is this course ID. So that uh, the My Math Lab is an online course management platform where I've loaded all of the homeworks and the exams and the practice exams. Basically, the My Math Lab account that you'll create or use if you already have one is where all the graded material lives. So right here, you go to this link Takes you to the My Math Lab uh, homepage, and if you have, if you already have an account, if you've used My Math Lab for another course, you'll sign in. You still have to purchase an access code uh, because it's it's a, it's a new access code for every textbook. Uh, if you have not used My Math Lab before, you'll go to register. Register as a student. The first thing it's going to ask you for once you hit OK, register now is the course ID. And that is, as I said, at the bottom of page one. So you'll create an account right here. So you'll see our course information, MAT181A1 Statistics, Summer 2020 is my name. Uh, so you'll go to create an account. Email address, pick a username and password, first name, last name, security question. That's it. Once you create the account, the very next page this takes you to gives you three options. Now, I'm not, I, I can't see it now because I'm not going to register another account, but the next page gives you three options. One, option one, enter the access code you've already bought. Option two, purchase an access code by putting your credit card and information or whatever into the you know, into the website and going through the purchase. And then option three, sort of in small blue text towards the bottom is uh, access your course for two weeks of free access. So you can access the course right away, but you'll have to pay for it within the first two weeks. Otherwise it'll lock you out. When you log into my math lab, I'll, I'll log into my account. And this is our course summer. All right. So, home page here, and uh, your options might look a little different. I think I may have more because I have the, the the professor version of the uh, of the accounts. The student version might look a little bit different. It, it will look a little bit different. But under assignments, if you click on assignments, you will see. Oh, actually, let me go course tools assignment manager. You will see all of the all of the assignments for the entire semester with due dates. So from day one, you have every single homework assignment, and you know exactly when it's due. All right. 
Now, one thing I want to say about this is, let me just open up a random assignment, preview. These are the exact same questions that are in the textbook. All the, really the only difference between this online system and a paper bound hard copy textbook is that you type your final answer into the website and that's it. It's like this, this is a question out of the textbook. Now, two things that I want to point out here. This little icon right here, anytime you see this icon right here, it allows you to open the problem in Excel. Well, we're going to be doing all of our calculations in Excel. No calculators. No calculators in this course. Uh, you really don't want to use a calculator because it's going to take way longer to do your calculations. So if you click open in Excel, it'll download a little file or it might open it right away depending on your browser. Uh, and it'll, it'll basically open or it'll give you the data from the problem in Excel. The other thing I want to point out over here, question help. For those of you who haven't used my math lab before, in question help, uh, some of these have more links than others. This one has four options. The one I wanted to point out is ask my instructor. So if you have a question about the homework, if there's a problem you're getting wrong, and now you could redo these problems as, as many times as you need to to get them right. So as long as you put in the time, you get full credit as long as you eventually get the questions right. But if you get a question wrong a couple of times, and you're not sure what to do, or you don't know how to start a problem, if you click Ask My Instructor, I don't think it's going to work for me, but yeah, not I, I can't send myself a question. But if you click Ask My Instructor, you could send me the question directly from your My Math Lab account, and I'll get a screenshot of your problem. And that's the best way to send me homework questions. All right. So once you get into my math lab, if there's more questions along the way, please send them, send them to me. Um, but for now, it's just get registered and access the homework. Uh, graph and calculator. Well, no calculator is required. Um, if you, if you do want to purchase the calculator, the recommended ones are, are these three, but I really highly recommend not using a calculator. And if you want, maybe for another course, uh, if you if you want, you could download a free TI-84 Silver Edition or TI-84 Plus Silver Edition graphing calculator for free onto your PC. I have a video that I made. You could access it here, the YouTube video. Uh, it's the exact same calculator that they sell at the bookstore for... Uh, you know, one hundred and forty-five dollars. So you could you could actually download this calculator, and I have instructions for that. <clears throat> okay. Technical requirements. Access to the internet is a requirement for this course. Um, if you need tech help, I have a link right here to uh, the IT support for Bunker Hill. Oh, actually, let me go back. Sorry. Uh, the other requirement here, so we talked about the My Math Lab access code. You absolutely need Microsoft Excel for this class. You cannot get by without it. Um, it's free. If you don't have it on your computer, you could download it for free. I put a link right here. If you go to this link, all you need to do is put in your Bunker Hill email address, and you could you could download Office 365 um, for free. All right, so that's that's an absolute must. Those are required materials. Uh, second point of contact. I put this in here because uh, we're in a new transitional period to teaching online. I mean, personally, I've taught online for years. Uh, I teach most of my classes face to face, but every semester I teach maybe one class, sometimes two online. So I do have a lot of experience teaching online, but. If you find that I am severely not meeting your needs and you've reached out to me and I haven't helped you, uh, you can contact Sunny Kang, Professor Sunny Kang. She's the chair of the math department. Uh, hopefully none of you will feel the need to, but this is the person. If you do need to complain about me and how I'm running the course, uh, you can reach out to her. Uh, each week is seven days, Monday through Sunday. Uh, holidays do not affect our weeks. So... Um, if you want to take the day off for a holiday, <clears throat> that's up to you. But um, 
There are no short weeks in this semester. All right, course description. Um, this is basically just copied out of the course catalog. My math lab account, we've talked about that already. Uh, learning procedures. Yeah, so you'll, you'll engage in a variety of learning methodologies. I'll have uh, lecture videos, problem sets. You have the homework on my math lab, exams on my math lab. I ha I'll have a number of Excel activities to get you learning Excel. <clears throat> Speaking of Excel, one of the, maybe the most important aspect of this class is a working, leaving it with a working knowledge of Excel. Uh, I'm not going to make any assumptions that you've used Excel before. So anything that I ask you to do on Excel or anything that you'll need to do on Excel, I will post something in which I show you how to do it first. Right? So it's important, it's really important that you start using Excel in week one. Uh, on the exams, <clears throat> there's going to be three exams. And they're on the schedule, which is a little bit later on this in the syllabus. They're not cumulative, but there may be some items from previous chapters that come up in later chapters, but there's no cumulative final. There's no cumulative midterm. We have one exam on chapters one, two, and three. Then we have an exam on chapters four and five, and then an exam on chapters six and seven. Um, no cell phones during the exams, but you 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 definitely can use your notes, and you absolutely should be using Excel. If you don't use Excel, it's going to be difficult to finish the exam on time. Some of these problems you'll see may take 10 or 15 seconds on Excel, but 10 or 15 minutes on a calculator. And you'll see that more and more clearly once you go through a few of my Excel introduction activities. Uh, homework is submitted through my math lab. I already talked about that. Uh, you have the due dates. If you're turning in homework late, you could still access homework after the due date, but you get hit with a 20% late penalty. Um, Beyond the penalty, beyond the late penalty, it's really, I mean, it's, it's a really, really important to stay on track because we're covering so much material in such a small amount of time that if you fall behind, it's very, very easy to just get buried in work uh, if you're not doing each week's work during that week and starting fresh the next week. Um, so the grade breakdown, homework is about half your grade, 55%. And each exam is 15%, so the three exams are 45%. That's 100. Then there's an extra credit project, which if you choose to do it, will add 5% to your overall grade. So if you finish with, let's say, an 88, you do the project. That brings you up to a 93, so you get an A. Uh, so we'll talk more about the projects a little bit later on. And we have our grading scale. Um, IP grade, it's very, very rare in the, in the 18 or so years I've been teaching, I've only given about five of them. Uh, it's very rare that it happens, but if you feel like you can't finish the semester for uh, reasons outside of your control, let me know as soon as you possibly can, and I'll let you know if an IP, which basically is an extension to the semester, is an option. But there's very strict standards for that, and they're not my standards, they're the college's standards. Uh, course methodology. I'm assuming that many of you have never taken an online class before. Many of you maybe haven't taken a summer math class before on an accelerated schedule. Uh, many of you maybe haven't taken a college level math course before. Uh, we're all coming from maybe slightly different places. An online class offers challenges that don't exist in a face-to-face -face class. So that's compounded by the fact that we only have six weeks. So it's an accelerated class and an online class. That's a double whammy. So um, you really have to buckle down from day one. And um, I'll tell you right now, this is 
I mean, do not plan on making this like a one day a week class. Like if you don't don't plan on doing all your work Saturday or Sunday, it's not going to be possible. Um, if you think about if we were meeting face to face, we're scheduled for Monday, Wednesday, eight thirty to noon. All right, that's three and a half hours twice a week. That's seven hours right there. Seven hours of lecture plus all the time you would be spending on homework. So expect to be spending more than 10 hours a week on this course. Definitely more than 10 hours a week. Um, there's really no way of getting around that. Uh, makeup policy. Um, so in this schedule, you have the dates of our exams. So exams will be um, uh, due at the end of the week, like the, the rest of the homework. If there's a reason why you cannot take an exam, the only way you can make it up is if you have documentation of an unforeseen emergency outside of your control. So please don't plan on missing an exam and emailing me and saying, hey, Eric, I uh, missed that exam. When can I make it up? The answer will be, unfortunately, you cannot. Okay, so you'll see each week we're covering about four sections, four, 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 four. Yeah, each week, yeah, I, I have it broken down. Six weeks, four sections per week. All right, that's 24 sections. It's quite a bit of information, quite a bit of material to go through. Uh, so I'm gonna do my best to give you as much support as, you, as, as, as I can, um, but it's really important that you follow these weekly folders that I, these weekly pages that I post for the course. These activities are meant to be done in order, and you see like this is a lot to do, um, and it's it's really too much to do in just one or two days. I mean, if you just this first video right here is forty minutes, um, so you really want to space that out over the week. All right, so I have the academic calendar. I just copied this off the Bunker Hill website uh, so it could be easily referenced. Uh, let's see, last day, June 17th. So that's halfway through week three. That's the deadline for withdrawing from the course. If you, if unfortunately you need to, hopefully no one does. If you're still registered, on June 18th, if the withdrawal deadline is passed, then you cannot leave the course. If you don't finish, the only thing, I have no control over this. I have no options. If you don't finish the course, but you're still registered, I have to give you an F. Okay, you should spend a minimum of six hours per week on course assignments. That's in addition to classroom lecture. So like, like I said, we were scheduled to meet face to face for seven hours, plus another six hours of outside of the classroom work. So that's six and seven is 13. So yeah, that's about, you know, between 10 and 15 hours a week is what you should be spending on this course. Uh, student resources. Uh, there's a, uh, for those of you who've never been there, there's a, a, a tutoring center, a tutoring uh, room on the main campus, which obviously is not open, but they're offering virtual tutoring uh, through WebEx. So you could uh, you could contact them and or just go to their WebEx meeting and uh, get some online tutoring if you want. Uh, I'm also available for Zoom meetings and phone calls and things like that. Um, course evaluations. There's no procedure set yet in place. If uh, if the administration figures out a way to do course evaluations, I will let you know. We'll take care of those before the semester's over. Uh, code of conduct. So this stuff you might want to read on your own. Code of conduct, academic honesty. Uh, for individuals with, with a disability, if you feel like you need um, uh, any um, accommodations, you have to go through the uh, 
uh, disability support services office. So you, before I could give you things like extra time and extensions, uh, you have to go through the disability support services office and then they'll send me a form and then I could give you accommodations. Okay, their website is down here. Uh, and this is this is new for me, putting this in a syllabus, uh, but because of what's going on in the world right now. Um, if you feel physically, emotionally, or academically concerned for any reason, you can um, contact the care team. Uh, equal opportunity, inclusion, again, read this. Title nine. There's a link to the catalog. All right, and that's about it. Uh, our learning objectives. I've put on more learning objectives than we're probably going to cover. This is what I cover on a normal 16-week semester. So I'm actually, I've actually cut two chapters off what I normally teach in statistics. Uh, so you know, one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. So we're going to go up through unit seven. Uh, if there's time, which I highly doubt there is, we may go into unit eight. Oh, and uh, unit 10 is also part of uh, the first exam. Uh, this, uh, the syllabus, believe it or not, is a legally binding agreement. So whatever is in the syllabus is the rule of law for this class. Uh, I do reserve the right to amend the syllabus, and I will uh, notify the course, the class immediately if I do. I don't see, uh, I don't see uh, myself revising the syllabus. It's pretty much uh, good to go. And finally, I always end my syllabi with a couple of quotes: "Evolution forged the entirety of sentient life on this planet using only one tool: mistake." And Master Yoda said. The greatest teacher, failure is. Uh, I, I don't just add these on here because they sound cool, even though they do sound cool. But uh, I think these quotes are really important in the context of a math course. Uh, I believe you cannot learn without making mistakes. Uh, there's going to be times where you're frustrated and stuck and feel like you're maybe wasting time or spending too much time on something. That's where the learning takes place. Memorizing formulas is not learning. If you memorize how to do a problem, you haven't really learned anything. Learning is understanding. Learning is realization. And really that comes from making a mistake, analyzing why you made that mistake, and equipping yourself with the tools necessary to not make that mistake again. So as you move through the course, when you're stuck, when you're making a mistake, please, please let me know. Uh, all right, so that is about it uh, for the syllabus. One last thing I want to point out just came to mind. I'm going to go back into my math lab, and I'm going to open up a different homework because some of the homeworks have more options than others. Let's see if this one... Ah, okay, so this one has a couple of options that weren't there before. So let's say you're doing this problem, you have no idea what to do. You can um, open up the textbook. So you have a, the, the reason you don't have to buy a physical textbook is because the digital textbook is uh, embedded in your My Math Lab account, so you have access to the textbook. Um, some, some problems have videos either a video solution or a video explanation. And then there's this, help me solve this. So if you click help me solve this, you will see a step-by-step -step explanation of how to solve the problem. So you'll see, it says down here, 15 parts remaining. So what this does is it basically walks you through the problem, start to finish, by asking you some intermediary questions or um, maybe it's not it's not 15 questions for you to answer a lot of those steps will just be telling you a formula or telling you a definition or a rule or something like that so um, you could always use this help me solve this I have this 
Uh, I have this set to be available for all homework assignments as long as it's um, available through, through my method. Okay, so that's about it. Good luck getting started with the course. I know this is a lot of information, uh, but I'm sure there'll be more questions as we get into the first couple of weeks or at least the first week. When you have questions, please send them my way. Uh, I could always set up a phone call or a Zoom call um, at your request. All right, I'm excited. I think this is a really great course. I love statistics. It's a really useful course and um, yeah, good luck.